are for the next in the series of interviews celebrating 10 years of synesthesia. Today's theme is sustainability, and I'm about to speak with Sara Di Simone, Managing Director of Tetra Pak Packaging Solutions. Sara, hi, how are you today? Very good, hello, good morning, everything is fine. You? Yes, very good, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being able to, to join us for this interview today. That's really my pleasure. Wonderful. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about sustainability. Of course, Tetra Pak is a, a huge company occupied in, in lots of different spaces, but we're going to focus a little bit on sustainability today, um, yeah. which I think is a, a, a topic that's you know, really important to your company as it is to us here at, at Synesthesia. Yes, it is. And Sustainability is important for Tetra Pak, I would say 360, uh, taking into account sustainability in all aspects, uh, from the environment uh, to people, uh, food. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever is uh, sustainable uh, and, and also a sustainable business, of course. Perfect. And you're right, that's such a good opening that 360 is the way to think of sustainability in all of, in all of those different ways. And I, I wanted to start off by asking you, you know, so Tetra Pak is a, is a global company, but here in Italy, you've got a real presence, particularly in the city of, of Modena, where you are today. Um, how important is the connection with the local economy and the local society for Tetra Pak? Um, I would say it's crucial. Uh, it's crucial uh, for uh, different reasons. First of all, uh, the, the reason why Tetra Pak Packaging Solutions is in Modena is because of the connection uh, with the uh, local uh, uh, reality in terms of uh, uh, Motor Valley, basically. Uh, so the engineering uh, uh, um, land where uh, Tetra Pak could find uh, the engineering competencies uh, that uh, became uh, the pillars and the starting point uh, for Tetra Pak uh, in Italy. And uh, so, first of all, this is the reason why the connection is so important. It's really to have a, a connection with the right companies, uh, with the right suppliers, the right people, the uh, universities, uh, and so really gather together all the uh, needed competencies uh, for uh, research and development, in our case, uh, when it comes to packaging solutions. Then there are other reasons why the connection with uh, the local uh, uh, territory is so important. Uh, it's really because uh, Tetra Pak uh, is uh, an important reality in uh, Emilia-Romagna and it's an important reality in the Modena area. And uh, uh, it becomes a bit of uh, um, supporting each other. So one hand, uh, uh, as I said before, is the connection with all the value chain and the fact that uh, Tetra Pak is not alone, is collaborating with uh, uh, many suppliers, uh, with uh, research centers, uh, with uh, uh, universities. And uh, um, on the other hand, uh, Tetra Pak uh, is really contributing uh, to uh, the growth and the, um, I would say the positive growth of the local uh, um, the local environment, uh, it's, uh, it's contributing uh, with the initiatives uh, in the school, in the municipality, um, a lot of course of initiatives when it comes to uh, supporting uh, uh, people with, uh, with uh, needs or special needs. So I would say that uh, this, this connection uh, is really a, a give and take uh, in, in both uh, directions. Um, and and I, I I think it's working uh, it's working pretty well. Uh, I give you another example. Uh, uh, Modena uh, as a, as a city, you know, is a small town. Uh, anyhow, really um, committed uh, in uh, sustainability matters, uh, CO two uh, reduction, uh, footprint reduction, uh, uh, and other matters more on the uh, food sustainability, food waste reduction. Uh, and uh, uh, it becomes natural that we move on hand in hand and we collaborate uh, on those top topics that for us are uh, key and high in uh, the agenda. Sure, I mean, that is a, an awful lot that, that you have going on there. And like you said about working so much in, in harmony and partnership with the local yeah. economy. Um, yes. 
which, you know, I think it sounds brilliant. I think it sounds great that such a global company is working so closely. You know, I loved hearing the bit that you're working with schools. I mean, how, how brilliant. I, I think this is the, one of the strengths of Tetra Pak. Tetra Pak, as you said, is a global international company. And of course, we have a lot of uh, apps and we work worldwide. So also our um, supply chain or our collaboration really go, go uh, across uh, uh, countries, I would say it, it, it goes all over the, uh, the globe. Anyhow, uh, the connection uh, with the local uh, um, economy and with the local uh, authorities, uh, it's strong. Um, I believe it's strong overall, uh, everywhere, for all the different uh, sites Tetra Pak has around the world. I can speak, of course, for uh, Modena, where uh, these uh, partnership, you defined it very well. This partnership is in place since long. It's strong and healthy and is giving uh, benefits because that's the reality. It's giving advantages uh, to both us as a company and uh, the um, local economy. It's a bit of a of an happy marriage. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's, that's when things work, isn't it? When there's an advantage for both sides. That's, and that's the reality. I mean, let's be honest, it's yeah. really because it's a mutual advantage. Exactly right. And that's, that's how it should be. I, I just want to take that theme, that theme of the harmony, the, the theme of partnership, and just thinking about that and applying that more to the environment. Um, you know, we at Synesthesia believe that it's very possible to, leave, to live um, you know, in balance um, with, our, with our environment and that we should try to to re recover um, the damage that's been done um, to, to the environment and live in, in accordance with the, the two, 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. I know that that's something that's important at Tetra Pak as well. And I was wondering if you could share with us some of the specific activities that you've put into place with regards to that living in harmony with the, with the environment piece. Yes. First of all, can only confirm that Tetra Pak truly believe that uh, uh, we can make the difference and live in harmony with uh, the environment around us. So that's the reason why um, Tetra, Tetra Pak and I believe that uh, a sustainable package can make the difference. Uh, uh, I mean, a sustainable package uh, or sustainable packaging on a more general basis uh, can help uh, mitigate climate change. Uh, it can help to address uh, many other uh, environmental uh, uh, concerns while, of course, uh, uh, feeding a growing population. Because let's not forget that uh, uh, the, the forecast, or at least the assumption, is that by 2050, 9.1 billion worth, uh, we will have 9.1 uh, billion worth population. And that will mean that uh, at least uh, we will need. 70% more of uh, food availability. So packaging is important um, and food protection is important. Another, another element that we take into account is that 33% uh, more or less indicatively of food uh, uh, lost uh, is lost or wasted uh, each, year, each year. And uh, um, in this respect, high performance packaging plays a critical role in uh, today's global food uh, delivery system. So if you combine the need of uh, food, the increasing need of food, uh, with the fact that we want to make the difference, uh, uh, climate change wine and environment uh, uh, wine, this is, that becomes uh, 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 an important uh, um, connection. And uh, uh, Tetra Pak wise, uh, uh, we believe that pa paper-based uh, uh, packaging is uh, um, really catching high interest uh, uh, in, in the industry. And uh, um, it's really under the condition of full uh, uh, circularity. So for example, uh, uh, we believe in this low carbon circular economy. Uh, we are working hard, and maybe, maybe we will have a bit of discussion later, on uh, renewable uh, materials uh, as well as uh, sustainable sourced material. Mm -hmm. So um, there are, I mean, I try, I try a bit to uh, summarize, uh, and I, I've written them down here. So there are five key sustainable challenges for a sustainable uh, food packaging uh, future. 
first of all is really raw material and sourcing, going back to the themes of uh, renewable and recyclable, is uh, the production and the distribution that has to be sustainable because in any case, producing and distributing is heavily impacting the carbon footprint. Then is food protection and uh, uh, consumption. And again, uh, if you think about uh, um, protecting the food, uh, this is uh, fundamental from a sustainability per perspective, not only because it reaches uh, and it uh, supports uh, uh, people and population, but it's really because uh, if we can have uh, uh, um, packages and packaging solutions that don't need, uh, for example, a refrigeration, uh, uh, or that protect the food for many, many months. Then uh, uh, we are working uh, heavily on uh, uh, recycling, and that's the reason why there is this strong collaboration uh, with the recyclers, for example, in order to make sure that uh, we find the formula to make uh, our packages uh, um, profitable for, uh, for recyclers. Because again, I'm sorry to go back to this point, but if there is no win-win uh, position, uh, then uh, it simply doesn't work. So that's the reason why, one hand, uh, we are working with recyclers in order to improve uh, the um, uh, productivity and efficiency of the uh, recycling sites with new investments, new equipment, more, uh, more efficient. Uh, but on the other hand, we are working on the raw materials and we are working on the converted materials to make them easier to be recycled. And then last but not least, uh, we are working a lot on end of life of packaging. So right now, uh, uh, the, our, our uh, uh, capability in uh, uh, reusing or minimizing the complete waste of uh, our packages uh, is uh, not uh, yet where it should be. So the reason why we are thinking so uh, seriously and, and researching and investing and developing a lot in uh, renewability and in uh, um, a healthy way of sourcing raw materials uh, is really because we want to prolong the end of life of our packaging uh, as much as possible. So reuse as much as possible what we are uh, uh, developing. So uh, our ambition overall is to de deliver uh, the, the most sustainable food package. And uh, research and development wise, uh, uh, the focus right now is really on uh, new packaging solutions, uh, uh, recyclable packaging solutions, uh, new materials, uh, that's the reason why we are partnering with a lot of uh, uh, paper producer. Uh, um, and we are the reason why we are looking into plastic uh, uh, reduction and into possibly, for example, aluminium uh, uh, removal. I, I don't know how familiar you are with the uh, composition of uh, Tetra Pak packages, but basically 70% paper is uh, uh, um, plastic, it's 25% plastic, typically. Uh, is uh, plant-based plastic, and then is 5% aluminum. Our ambition, step-by-step, uh, uh, step, 2025 first and 2030, possibly at the end, is really to go as much as possible towards a fully pepper-based uh, uh, solution. Keeping in mind, anyhow, that we have to protect food. So we need to make sure that light, oxygen, uh, uh, are not uh, uh, damaging uh, the uh, properties of the, the food inside. And I was just thinking then, that, like you said, you know, it, as industry is committed, Tetra Pak is very committed. I don't have any doubts about that after, after what you've just described. And I was just thinking that from a consumer point, there's the piece about them needing to be committed as well, isn't there? About consumers needing to change habits, learn that about new products that they can use, new packaging that they can use, and maybe how to use it and, and why it's different. Um, yes. Yeah. This is a, a crucial part of the journey. We need to have consumers uh, understanding why it's important, understanding which are the benefits, understanding how to recycle. It's not obvious, not, not obvious at all. So um, I believe that uh, it's our duty to uh, explain uh, consumers uh, which are the benefits, 
uh, which are the long-term benefits. And uh, it's a combination of uh, um, really uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, benefits. So really thinking about climate change, protecting uh, the environment, uh, protecting uh, the future. On the other hand, uh, we need also to have in mind the affordability. Mm. So we cannot uh, think about sustainability as something that only uh, certain uh, um, people can afford to. We need to make sustainability affordable for everybody. And this is the other challenge, how to uh, innovate, uh, how to introduce uh, um, sustainable solutions that uh, can be affordable by all consumers and uh, uh, can be affordable by our customers. And our customers, of course, are the producers. So it's always this combination of, of, of uh, innovative solutions uh, combining uh, the uh, uh, environmental aspects and the uh, affordability and the economical advantage, let's, let's, uh, let's say like that. And I'm going to add something else to that as well, because I think there's a, uh, I saw a quote from you that's about innovation also with performance. It's important that sustainability and innovation can also still perform. Um, yes. So, which I, is something that you've said. <laughs> um, so I wanted to add yes. that. But um, maybe this is a good opportunity for you to share us a, a bit more with us about those um, you know, those recycled materials and those new materials you were talking about, because um, you know, it would be great to hear how Tetra Pak are putting that sustainability, innovation, performance piece really into play. Yes, I will give you a very practical example. I mean, uh, uh, Tetra Pak packages uh, uh, are there to protect food and to make food available uh, uh, everywhere. So, this is this is what we need this is our promise so we need to make sure that our package is really able to preserve uh, the food inside and preserve uh, for a long time so a long left a long shelf life and without preservatives said that this is our our uh, first uh, commitment and our first priority so any kind of innovation including innovations for sustainability, so new packaging, new materials, uh, uh, more paper, less plastic, maybe no aluminium. We need to make sure that when uh, moving from a current solution to new solutions, uh, mm -hmm. um, we are still uh, bringing, there the, the bringing to consumers and to customers uh, the performance of the package itself. It wouldn't make any sense to have a fully paper-based uh, um, uh, package, fully recyclable, fantastic from an environmental perspective, but that is not uh, protecting uh, the food inside. That is not uh, securing that the food can last for many, many months. That uh, would require to have preservative inside. That would be totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we, we, we need always to think about uh, uh, innovation uh, uh, as uh, uh, enabling, I mean, as, as a main enabler for new solutions, but new solutions also in the sustainability context uh, that perform. So innovation, sustainability and performance uh, have to go hand in hand. And the question is, you as a consumer, would you buy a package that from an environmental perspective is a uh, super uh, uh, but is not delivering you the healthy milk you want to give to your family, I think you wouldn't. Yeah. So that's really the, the formula. Innovation is key. Innovation is our, is our asset. We, we, we are continuously innovate, but we need to find solutions uh, that uh, perform uh, in all aspects. We need to, to find solutions that are really uh, performing uh, um, in, in terms of food protection, in terms of uh, uh, food, food waste reduction, and in terms of uh, sustainability and therefore less uh, uh, carbon footprint, for example. 
<laughs> and doing and doing all of that, doing all of that while the environment changes as well, while the nature of packaging, yes. how it's used, what the demand yes. is, changes, yes. and literally the yes. physical environment is changing as well. Yes. Um, so everything is changing, and you know we want to have always the better solutions. Um, but there is no forgiveness. So you need to make sure that uh, what you deliver, it's uh, uh, really matching uh, the expectations uh, of all consumers from the more demanding, the one that maybe are uh, ready to spend a bit more for uh, environment to the less demanding, maybe a bit more focused on uh, uh, low cost solutions with in mind the fact that uh, um, this planet uh, is for uh, is for everybody and we have to protect it protect it for for all of us independently by the uh, possibilities we have in terms of uh, uh, affordability that's something we we have in mind on a daily basis so sure. and i mean something that we're we're talking about there again is about be behavioral change it's about changing in people um, we all know those phrases about, you know, change starts with us and, and the ripple effect and, and trying to get that balance between indiv individual and consumer change and change at a governmental, state and, and company level and, and the meeting of the two. Um, they, they, they go together. Yes. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, I would say it's a really a change, a change journey. Then we have to walk the talk. Uh, yes. Of course, good examples. Uh, uh, have to come uh, from governments, uh, from companies, uh, from uh, schools, uh, but is a change journey that involves uh, involves everybody at all levels. Uh, it, I, I believe this is more a personal opinion that uh, this change will not happen if we do not make. I mean, if if we do not involve uh, uh, everybody in the value chain, everybody has to be in step by step. Of course, it's not something will happen quickly. But uh, giving the good examples, uh, people will follow, and we need to support this change with uh, good solutions and good examples. Quite right. And the more that people are incentivized, the easier it is to make, to make that change. Um, yes. And I wanted us to talk just a little bit, it links, links to that idea about cultural diversity. Um, you know, we've talked about you know, you're working with, closely with the local economy, we've talked about environmental. Um, sustainability. Cultural diversity is another important feature of, um, you know, is another focus for UNESCO. Um, it's something we talk about here at Synesthesia and, and like using your words, we try to, to walk the talk of that as well. Um, Tetra Pak have been a leader in this space and I wondered if you could just share a few thoughts on, on that with us, please. Diversity means uh, uh, diversity in a uh, age, background, experiences, uh, uh, culture, nationality, gender. And uh, this is something Tetra Pak uh, uh, has uh, focused and worked a lot upon. And the reason, the main reason is not just for the sake of diversity, but is really because diversity, starting from cultural diversity, brings uh, a lot of uh, advantages. You can really see how uh, diversity brings in different perspectives, um, different uh, way of uh, thinking, feeling, and uh, moving into the innovation context, uh, uh, moving into the research and development context, uh, the diversity really helps in, uh, um, in uh, exploring uh, with a very little amount of barriers and limits uh, different options. And only exploring different options uh, with a very open mind uh, uh, at the end uh, give you the possibility to focus uh, on the right solutions. This is quite uh, demanding in terms of process because it might take uh, a bit longer than say, you know, we go there, we, we, we select this uh, uh, solution, uh, that's decided, let's move on. It requires a bit more because you have to listen and you have to understand and you, and you have to expand in different contexts. But I can tell you my experience after 20, almost 21 years in Tetra Pak is that it pays off a lot. 
I would like just to comment that in combination with the um, cultural diversity and diversity on a more general basis, uh, there is all the inclusion discussion that uh, in Tetra Pak is very important. And inclusion uh, is uh, extremely important in a company, again, not only because it's uh, um, is, uh, uh, correct, uh, is, uh, is uh, humanly correct, but also because as diversity brings a lot of advantages uh, from uh, a business perspective. If you have uh, uh, a working environment where people feel uh, um, included, appreciated, uh, uh, where they can work well together in the right environment, uh, it goes by itself. And we have a lot of uh, uh, examples uh, that uh, productivity increases and uh, ideas, uh, I would say, uh, flourish. Sure. So that's really something uh, we, we are investing uh, a lot upon uh, with a continuous improvement mindset, because also for Tetra Pak, the journey is not completed. And there are many things to be addressed diversity wise and inclusion wise. And there we are. We're back to the same thing that we talked about from the beginning, the win win, the incentive, the, yes. the circular value chain um, that's so important. Um, yes. Sarah, you have very succinctly covered so many hot, hot keywords and topics and, and a, you know, essential ideas for us to, to think about. I just want to ask a last question, which is um, towards your vision for the future. Um, where, where do you see, what, how do you see the next 10 years? Um, of all the things we've talked about, what do you think is going to be different? What changes are we going to see? I truly believe uh, in innovation. I truly believe that uh, uh, through technologies and people, uh, we will uh, manage to build uh, um, uh, a flourish uh, uh, future. I'm not naive anyhow, so uh, we need to uh, keep uh, the focus. We need to um, keep the commitment, uh, uh, governments, uh, industries uh, um, made on uh, um, reducing environmental impact. We have a very clear targets uh, from uh, uh, United uh, uh, Nations. Uh, we have very clear targets to be achieved by 2030, 2050. And uh, to make the 10 years uh, uh, really um, uh, positive uh, and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, nice to live in. We need to to keep uh, um, uh, innovating uh, in in this direction. We need to keep investing uh, in uh, uh, solutions uh, with the low uh, carbon footprint uh, uh, impact. Um, we need to um, invest on in people. As you said, is a is a an overall change, and people need to embrace this change, uh, understanding the reasons uh, why it has to happen. So there is a strong. Uh, I have a strong belief that uh, understanding the why and uh, um, investing uh, in innovation uh, and uh, again giving the good example and walking the talk, the next th ten years uh, will uh, give us. Uh, um, great advantages in terms of uh, environment. I see a positive trend in terms of uh, uh, emissions, uh, in terms of uh, carbon footprint, uh, in terms of behaviors. Uh, and uh, I truly believe that uh, companies like Tetra Pak uh, plays uh, a major role. That's not something is going to happen by itself. We need to have uh, 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 coalitions uh, uh, to make it happen. Coalition with uh, with uh, at all levels, uh, uh, world level, uh, local level. Uh, that's the way I see the next ten years, and I, I really hope it's going to happen for the future generations, and uh, for us as well. Because I mean, in ten years' time, hopefully, we will uh, benefit about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, you you started off then by saying that you feel optimistic and. Quite honestly, listening to, to you speak makes me feel optimistic as well. Um, you know, to have um, someone in a leadership position such as yours with all of these ideas 
um, and the commitment to these causes, I think, is uh, you know, is great for us, <laughs> um, is great for Tetra Pak, um, and um, so you know, I, I agree with you. I think I, you know, there's a we're on a positive we're on a positive road. Let's hope yeah. that all of that interconnectedness between all the different things we've talked about, the sustainability, diversity, innovation, all of those different um, themes and subjects really does come together in the way that you just described. We have to make it happen. Sure. And, and again, my optimism is really linked to the fact I see how many uh, possibilities we have Technology-wise, it is wonderful what is happening, uh, and and the technology is one of the main enablers uh, together with uh, people brain and people heart uh, to to connect and make it happen. Brilliant. Well, Sarah, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. It's been wonderful um, for us as well. Um, thank you for being part of this series of interviews and and sharing your thoughts on sustainability. We, I wish you all the best, power to the, uh, to, to the process and all of the things that you're, you're working on at Tetra Pak. Um, and we will look forward to, to speaking with you perhaps another time in, in the future and seeing where we've got to. That would be fantastic. And thanks a lot. That's been very, very nice. Thank you so much.